Hey guys, Sublord here, back again with another action figure review. Today I'll be taking a look at the Spawn's Universe Raven Spawn version 2, brought to us by the fine folks over at McFarland Toys. And to celebrate the 30th anniversary of McFarland Toys, we are going to be taking a look at a bunch of Spawn stuff over the course of the next week or so. Much like we did a little bit of Star Wars stuff there for uh, May the 4th. And uh, funny enough, when I recorded the Ahsoka Tano Padawan Edition review from about a week ago now, uh, I didn't realize that was going live on May the 4th. So, uh, you know, having a bunch of Star Wars stuff go up when it did kind of makes sense. Happy accidents, right? Either way, back to the 30th anniversary of McFarland Toys and... What I got coming up for you guys on the channel, we're going to be looking at Spawn stuff until the release of the uh, Todd Father and Proto Spawn, Prototype Spawn 2-pack, which by the time this goes live, I should have and already have the review shot, filmed, you know, photographed and edited and uploaded, ready to rock uh, about a week from now. I'll say about a week, maybe a little more than a week, but... Uh, Got a lot of Spawn stuff to review. Been sitting on a lot of stuff for a while. And uh, we're going to kick things off with the oldest Spawn figure I got. Uh, the Raven Spawn version 2. With his Scythe of Doom. That's right, Scareglow from Masters of the Universe. This is a Scythe. What you have is a Halberd. Like this. What the first one came with. And uh, I gotta tell you, this Scythe looks like it kicked the crap out of this axe. Like... What? What even is this? This is cool, but this is ten times more aggressive. <laughs> and the handle's bigger, so he's got a better grip on it. That's what she said. On top of having that cool sight, though, he comes with this little sickle here. Now, it does have a loop on it for a chain. You can put a chain on there if you want. But, uh... That said, it doesn't have the big, chunky plastic chain that the, uh... First... Raven Spawn had. And when I say first a Raven Spawn, I mean this guy right here. There you go. Um the same mold. The head's not different or anything like that, but uh two really awesome figures. I'm glad I got them both. I know the colors a little different. I think one of them might be a little bit more green than the other one. I'm not sure. I know that Raven Spawn has had like a greenish brown tint to him before, and also just a straight kind of black, blackish gray tint to him as well. But uh, there you go. There's your comparison there to the first release. This one's also a little looser, especially on the one foot, I think. So I'm gonna do my uh, ball hinge switch around, but take a closer look at. Raven Spawn V2. He does come with a hockey puck display stand. We're used to seeing him with all McFarland Toys releases. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick by my uh, previous statement and saying I do think I like this one a little more. Because um, of the two, the color doesn't really bug me, but I do like the weapons. Like this is way more practical than a big plastic, not Lobo weapon. Um. So as far as articulation goes on this guy, said we'll rotate side to side. It looks up and down. I feel like it looks up and down better than the first one. Let me check that. No, they're about the same. This helmet kind of hinders things because of the way it's shaped, but uh, you get that cool kind of Grim Reaper face there. Shoulders go out as much as the little points on his cape will allow. That said, you can't kind of Pull these out and have them go up and over the cape like that and you can get the arm up more you could totally do that um, I'm still curious if that's the way no it's supposed to tuck under there but if you want to lift the arm up you can lift the, uh, the cape up and out of the way on the shoulder there just kind of lose some of the more intricate sculpt work but you can get it up more that's a plus um, that said, it is kind of tricky to get him back in there unless you rotate the arm 180 and then do that. Not the best 
you know, articulation there. I think they could have just had this attached up here and just put a slit in it and had it shift up, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, that setting, of course, rotates. Has that rotator cap in there. You get a little play out of that. He does have a bicep twist. This was a little stuck on this one, but uh, it works fine now. Instead of pop the arm off, kind of give it a good bit of elbow grease there. Uh, the elbow is double hinge. Get that out of it. He's got the ball hinge wrist, so of course he can hold his weapons appropriately, as well as rotate around. He's got the big claw hands and these big spike gauntlets on his arms so that's cool uh, the torso can crunch not very far forward but it can go back a little bit and, you know I do have to kind of find the sweet spot with this torso a little bit so I think it's an older design I don't think it's a double ball peg I think it's just a single but it does work it's, it will stay in place, but it is a little bit uh, finicky, we'll say. He does have a waist twist, but it's very hindered by the belt. But it does work. It's not stuck, it's just running in the stuff. As far as the hips go, it can kick out. Nice tight clicks there. And the forward and back's fine as well. Uh, he's got a little thigh cut up here, but nothing much. Double knee. Those are nice and crunchy. Uh, no Cliffs of Dover to speak of on this guy either. Nothing warranting the song anyways. He's got the skulls on his knees. He's got the spiky boots. And then he's got the hinge in the ankle. Nice and tight on this guy on both sides. With the rotation as well as the rocker. And the toe hinge, which again, not loose on this guy. Acceptable. Um, so, cool figure. Um, I already got the first one, so I didn't really need this one. But the colors were different, and the weapons were different. I'm kind of a, a checklist collector with the Spawn line. Uh, you know, Spawn is one of my three loves, so... You know, the more spawn, the better to me, even if it is just a simple variant. But I did get him on clearance from a Big and Bad Toy Store. He was about 10 bucks off, so shout out to them for having smoking deals. Better than Amazon. He wasn't really on sale on there. But uh, there he is, complete with his dangly crotch chains. <laughs> but, uh, bringing in our two uh, regulars here. We got the Mythic Legion's Brother Manibalith right there. In the infamous eleven spawn, and as you can see, Raven spawn is freaking huge. He towers over good old Al Simmons here. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but uh, you know, I always like the villains to be taller than the good guys, and I'm pretty sure Raven spawn is a villain, right? My dumbass used to think it was Cogliostro, but uh, either way. With that being said, I think it is time now that we wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and despite the fact that I do still really love the first version of good old Raven Spawn from Spawn's Universe line, I have to agree with my previous statement that of the two, this quote unquote newer version is my favorite. Not only are the joints a little bit tighter, I mean, that's probably due to the fact that the other one is a bit older, let's not kid ourselves. But I do also like the weapons more. Personally, I prefer the scythe and the sickle to the axe and chain whip that the first version came with. Not only because, let's face it, that scythe is just badass. Even though the axe is the more traditional raven spawn weapon of choice, I know. But the sickle doesn't have a big old chunky plastic chain hanging off it that gets in the way. That said, as far as the colors go, I'm, it's really neither here nor there for me i could take it or leave it but at the end of the day i knows what i likes and i likes this second version of good old raven spawn more than his predecessor so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this review until next time i'll catch you guys later